welcome. It's, it's just so exciting uh, to welcome you to the O-Lab. It's, uh, it's, we're still building the wall, so people will keep joining us as we continue. But uh, for those of you who are here, it's just fantastic to see you all and to have you through this process. This will be a bit of an experiment of itself. And so Clay is going to start the discussion of what it means to build theory, how we might do that together. You do it every day in one way. We do it probably in a slightly different way. We want to be able to have that conversation going forward. So that's step one. Step two then will be, I'll come in and talk a little bit more about what it means to actually run a field experiment. This is about field experiments. We want to build a capacity together to do that because we can't do it without you and we think that at least a little bit of our toolkit would be helpful in partnering around that. And part of the goal here is to come up with some field experiments that might actually make organizations better. And if we do that together, then we all benefit. You know, when we talk about theory, people often think that we're talking about abstract things, but theory can have concrete applications as well. The goal of today's conversation is to start with existing and abstract ideas and get to concrete new things that we might want to test. I'd like to introduce the man who at 6.30 in the morning on February 15, 2007, called me to invite me to join the doctoral program at HBS, and since has been key to my thinking about these issues and others over time, Clay Christensen. Clay, will you join me out here? How are you? Welcome. <coughs> And so, Clay, we've got about, we've got increasing numbers on the wall. We've got about 100 observers out there as well, people who wanted to be here but are there here in chat, and I'll keep track of that. How do we think about the process of building theory when it comes to organizations? Why in the world would we be interested in theory if we're managers? Uh, we, we, take, we teach our students to be data-driven and fact-based and analytical in their decision-making processes. But if data is only avail available about the past, then we're essentially teaching our students to take action when the game is over. And uh, a better way to think about the problem is, my gosh, I have to look into the future and I need to be able to predict what's going to happen in the future and there's no data, then the only way I can look in the future is if somebody has given us a theory of causality. Because that allows us to say, if we do this, then this will happen. And, and so theories are of immense value to managers. That's what I decided. I, I will come back. I saw a couple hands. I'll come back to you. So let's use, let's use HBS as a perfect example of a field experiment one we're conducting on ourselves. We're standing here in the middle of HBX, after all. So the first thing you need, and there's only four key points of a field experiment, the first thing you need is an intervention. In this case, HBX is not on campus. We're at the WGBH studios right now, and we've created something that's outside of our normal way of doing work. Yeah. That's our intervention. Um, based on a hypothesis about what it might or might not do. So. Our, our head of HBX is constantly thinking about what it is that this means for both demand more broadly, externally, and what it means for the business school. Then we need some sort of metric to measure the effect of the intervention. And of course, as you suggest, the, me the metric matters. So if it's profitability, is it growth, is it number of people in this room, whatever it might be. But we'll, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll choose a metric to measure the success of our experiment. And I don't actually know what that is, but I'm sh maybe, maybe Patrick will tell us. Um, I know what it you know, is. What is it? It is net promoter score. You know, on a scale of 1 to 10, would I recommend this for my, cus for my friends? And, but that's a good metric, actually. And then we, you want to, and this is for your organizations and for us, choose an experimental and a control group. So I, ideally, it's random assignment. We haven't quite met that standard for ourselves. <laughs> But if you had 100 people, or in this case 10, you'd pick five randomly to be in the control and five randomly to be the experiment, and you try to figure out how it is, or groups, or whatever the unit of analysis might be. And you'd actually conduct an experiment the way a scientist would, mm -hmm. using the scientific method. And in this case, experimental is what we're doing right now. Control is what you and I will do in a physical classroom later this week, later this month, whenever we're next in the classroom. 
And then the fourth, the why, are there other metrics to explain the mechanism behind the effect? So let's say that all of you come back and say that you think that this is not as good as what we deliver in the classroom. Is that because of the logistics process of getting there? Is it because of the way that we interacted? Did we not get enough voices in the room? Whatever it might be. Are there moderators that we could think about? Could we have done a survey of all of you before and after to see how the intervention changed you versus the way a, a classroom normally changes the people who flow through it? And if you have those four components, you have what we would call, I think, a pretty good rigorous field mm -hmm, experiment mm -hmm. that helps us answer the questions of how we might predict the future, what the language is around our theories, um, what are the corner cases, how do we develop them, and ultimately, what the causal effects involve. Yeah, yeah. So that's the gold standard. How do we think then about, as this group evolves, doing that on the basis of the theories of organization design that Clay mentioned, the lack of a, of a way of really developing them into the future, and these methods of field experiments using the questions and challenges you presented so far. So I was in a factory, Greg, different context from yours. But I had a factory, of, of, it was one of the largest contract manufacturers in the world. This was in China, so it was one of their largest uh, floors, and they, they were making roughly one out of every 25 mobile devices made in the world at the time. And this is, this is their setup, their 16 lines, 30, 32 line shifts, because they had a day and a night shift. And so this was a perfect example of the context allowing for a field experiment. Um, I actually was going to select randomly four out of the, th of the 32 lines to experiment on. Long story short, when I did so, I had two lines that were a little too close together, and so engineering suggested I put up the curtain you see here. And the curtain was intended to separate those two lines from one another. When they put the bar up, the, um, the workers joked that uh, they were going to uh, be able to dry their wet laundry on the, on the hanging bar. When the curtain went up, they joked that the other side must have the swine flu uh, this dates the time of the experiment a little bit, but I had embedded researchers on the line at the time, essentially confederates who they didn't know were anything other than another worker. And one of the workers actually said, wouldn't it be nice if they hung curtains all around the line so we could be completely closed off? It would be much more productive if we did that. And a short, long story short, that's actually what I ended up doing. Forget the interventions that I had theoretically thought about. I ended up taking lines and putting curtains around them to see how that would affect performance. Now you would say, to your question, doesn't that affect the other um, 28 lines as well? And the answer is yes, probably for the first couple of days. But actually after a while, no one really gave it much thought. And especially the night shift, which never thought about it being about them, didn't either. So sometimes experiments can be designed in such a way such that you know, training is different regions, um, the curtains are different lines that you can actually separate things in a, in a cleaner way using a, a very carefully uh, designed experiment to try and get at that. And just if, if any of you are wondering, uh, the answer was that the lines behind the curtain, despite your operations folks' craziest thoughts, um, were much more productive. So that green space is the, produ the uh, production that we created with, with curtains uh, over the course of, of, um, of five months. And the, the, res the result was that ultimately privacy at the group level was productive in a world where it was increasingly transparent. I've written on the board that this is where I think we are. We've talked about challenges. We've hit some education, some theory around what might help with these challenges, but we don't have a perfect theory. And to me, this is exactly what we do in the classroom. And ultimately, we, we promise that the school is going to make a difference. And the hypothesis here that Clay and I, I think, are putting forward is that maybe experimentation done together in, in a rigorous way could actually have more of an, an impact in making a difference than we've seen in this field to date. And so I hope we will engage you going forward. You will get additional communication from us. I hope you will continue to be engaged. I hope we will actually get some of these field experiments that you're in your minds now and hopefully a little bit more shaped than they were before, a little bit more informed by the theories we think might be relevant. Bring those out. We'll work with you to do it. Um, and we'll see where this goes. Thank you for taking the time with us. We know you're very, very busy. And we hope that this turned out to be a worthwhile um, expenditure of your time. Yeah, big thanks to you guys. God and, bless you. And thank you to Clay. Thank you. This was, uh, this was a thank dream you. of mine come true to thank spend you. this time with you in front of, <laughs> in front of the classroom. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank, thank you. you.